Uh, from Honolulu, Hawaii. This is this, we're following one contingent, uh, Kakaako United, to the People Not Profits rally at the state capitol. So we're going to be on our way. We're now standing in front of the uh, federal building. So we'll be following uh, Kakaako United to the. Uh, you're live on the internet right now, live on the internet. <laughs> Thank you. People are watching. How's it? <laughs> People from uh, Local 5, IKEA, um, watching. You're live on the internet right now. We're, gonna, we're walking up Punch Bowl. <laughs> How's it? <laughs> There are already people at the. Uh, hey, Maui in the house. Woo! Looks like the mom hui too. Mom hui in the house. All right. Kakaku, you're live on the internet. Thank you. We're following you to the to the state capitol. So we'll follow them up punch bowl. And that is the first circuit court building, and we're walking up the street. This is a very historic uh, part of Honolulu and a very um, governmental part. So on my left is the federal building. On the right is the court. We'll pass uh, a lot of buildings we'll announce as we go past the Supreme Court, Honolulu Library, Honolulu Hale, that's uh, City Hall. The wind has died down, so I think we'll get uh, a reasonable sound. The march and rally is uh, kind of patterned after the massive rally in 1971 called by uh, Kokua Hawaii and Save Our Surf, John Kelly, you remember, the late John Kelly. Federal building also contains uh, the, uh, the Federal Circuit Court. State uh, Department of Taxation. On the right up there is the uh, State Department of Transportation. Most of the people in Hawaii live on this island. Most of the people who live on this island live in Honolulu. Unfortunately, the state is very Honolulu centric. The capital is another uh, block or two up the street. People from the outer islands uh, have a hard time um, participating in hearings and whatnot. And although uh, on a county level in places like uh, Hawaii Island, there are remote digital uh, locations where people can testify and watch hearings. That doesn't exist on the state level. If you want to attend a hearing, you got to get on a plane. Many rivers to cross before you can talk to the boss. You know what I'm saying? Just like that song. This is a state tax building. That is the State Department of Transportation, like that looks like a government building, isn't it? Okay, this is the uh, Supreme Court. No, it's not yet, I'm sorry. <laughs> Supreme Court's coming up, it's across the street. If you just joined us, we're on our way uh, 
I'm following Kaka'ako United to the uh, People Not Profits rally at the Capitol. Let me give you a elevator shot so you can see how many uh, people we got here. That's this contingent. There are already people at the Capitol. Let me give you a shot at the Department of uh, Transportation. Off to the right, Kawaiahau Church uh, Cemetery. This entire area has uh, many remains. Ancestral remains like in the right below the, uh, the road here under the buildings. Every time they build, they'll unearth uh, remains because of the uh, couple reasons. One is the uh, very high and dense population in Old Hawaii of this area and of Hawaii itself. And of beca because of uh, massive die-offs caused by a, a wave of uh, plagues. And when you uh, bury your relatives, you want them buried uh, near their ancestors, many of which were, were at the church, you know. There wasn't as strict a uh, determination of property lines in, in the old days. And there's a story behind that too that you've probably heard if uh, we're kind of in two groups now, so I'm uh, walking in front. Let me see if I can switch the camera around. There we go, we're looking backwards now. And that's me, and I'm going to switch it back, because I'm just the old guy. <laughs> Try and catch up with the other guys. I notice the marches nowadays, and I'm a veteran of a lot of marches. Either uh, people march a lot faster or I'm slowing down. <laughs> or both. Across the street, historic Kawaiahau Church, which was one of the stops. that Admiral Thomas made in 1843 to announce restoration of sovereignty to the Hawaiian nation after a short British misadventure. He walked uh, his contingent of men to announce it at uh, Kawaiahau Church, also at uh, Iolani Palace. And of course, uh, lowered the British flag from Thomas Square which wasn't called Thomas Square but named after the Admiral in his honor for doing that thing. This is the uh, Supreme Court building. On the corner, across the street, that old building, Honolulu Hale, City Hall. <laughs> there is a council meeting today to do, among other things, here, Bill 3. I, I would have uh, been at that hearing had I not been here. Bill 3, I think, is a, another of uh, many bills aimed at criminalizing the houseless introduced by uh, Ikaika Anderson hands over uh, to the police powers to just uh, confiscate anything from homeless people rather than depending on the Department of Facility Maintenance as they have been in the past. I'm totally against Bill 3. Pending at the legislature is Bill HB House Bill 1889. HB 1889.
a homeless bill of rights which I support patterned after very similar bills I see an anonymous mask here oh, that's pretty cool okay stop right there you guys gotta go anywhere everybody stop <laughs> we're at the uh, you're listening to the uh, march uh, coordinator trying to coordinate <laughs> But you know, this is a movement. This isn't like an organization, is what I'm thinking. So you can't really control people that much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a good bunch here. We had people from the outer islands fly in, and now, as I was saying, Hawaii is very Honolulu centric. You know, they don't rotate the uh, government during uh, legislative sessions. Why don't they have it on Maui uh, every other year? Why don't they move the legislature to the Big Island every few years? It's always in Honolulu, and if you got an outer island issue... You're out of luck. The person uh, with shopping carts might be uh, might be one of the many uh, houseless people that depend on shopping carts. We were just talking to uh, Tom Brower yesterday at the state capitol, representative from the Waikiki area. He was named uh, asshole of the day for taking a sledgehammer to people's uh, shopping carts. Great solution to homelessness. Take their property and destroy it. Smart guy. Tom said he, he wanted to uh, start a discussion. That he did. Okay, we're heading across the street. We're heading up Punchbowl to the state capitol. Right now we're right across from Honolulu Hale, which is uh, City Hall. If you just joined us, we're walking with a contingent of the rally. Which is Kaka'ako uh, United. Kaka'ako is an area near the waterfront that's been slated for massive uh, development millionaire condos and the uh, government will go out of its way to accommodate them there's some support it's raining a little bit Why are we defecting here? Because <laughs> I don't have that man's color on. He's oh, out. oh. Was he really? He was just tripping. All the red to the front. And I'm like, dude, you should hey, be happy that green and purple and white and... This is a movement, not an argument. You know what he used? You know it. what he used? Yeah. Hey, back when we did the March 5,000 people with Surf First, I said that was the 70s. That, that was. was. Years ago hey, plus, that. I was there. Me too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were there. Me too. Hey, all right. We were there. Save the valley. I've been marching in these streets so long. There was a rally at the Capitol. This is modeled after one that uh, was held in 1971. What is that? 40 years ago? 45 years ago? Forty, about 40, 40 some odd years ago, and I was there. A lot of other people were there. It was called by. Kokua Hawaii and Save Our Surf. Kokua Hawaii was a group that uh, grew out of uh, Kokua Kalama. Kalama, Kalama Valley uh, between Hawaii Kai and Makapu uh, was a community, farm community that was slated for suburban development. A lot of evictions. This 
that kind of marked the start of uh, some of the land struggles and education about uh, how, pe how things got zoned, how uh, deals got made by the government. Now this group, according to the coordinator, wants to remain uh, on its own and they uh, kind of alienated some of the supporters. But uh, what people learned in 1971 was that it was a movement, it wasn't an organization. And control it. We are in front of the State Library. A lot of historic old buildings. And again, that is uh, the side of uh, Honolulu Hale City Hall. And that uh, is a state building that houses the Department of uh, Land and Natural Resources. And right here, I'm going to turn to the right. New building built, I guess, in the early 60s. What I call the big house. The big house is the state capital. The state of Hawaii. Some call it the fake state because it uh, was uh, somewhat um, questionable. There's no treaty of annexation. They said it was annexed and then statehood declared 1959. There was no um, treaty of annexation. In fact, there was incredible amount of popular opposition to annexation, as you can imagine. I mean, who wants their nation annexed by another? Statehood declared uh, in 1959 uh, by a vote, which oddly enough was counted only a very small minority of people uh, and didn't really give a choice uh, between various forms of governance. Now these guys are heading off to get some uh, traffic so they can uh, demonstrate their signs. They might be going out to the front. Let's meet them uh, as they enter from that, and I'll take you on a little tour of the state capitol as people set up for the rally. I came earlier and uh, they were setting up a stage and that sort of thing. Walter Ritty was here. This is the back of the uh, state library. That uh, building you can kind of see beyond, behind the trees is the state archives. Behind that is Iolani Palace. If you're watching from the uh, outer islands or from Turtle Island, the continent, the place formerly known as the mainland, then uh, you might find this interesting. In any case, I hope you find it interesting. Sorry about kind of the shakiness, but you know, this is live stream on a mobile platform so you can get good picture or you can get mobile it's hard to get both behind this banyan tree Iolani Palace which was surrounded by troops on uh, January 17th 1893 he's subject to a military invasion not by the U.S., but from businessmen who decided to form their own government. Here's the statue of Hawaii's uh, last monarch, Queen Liliu Okalani. And she's looking at the 
capital rotunda. Asking <laughs> for a nation back. Sometimes it seems, or uh, she told uh, people to remain steadfast, and they have. There's the setup, we are in the rotunda. Aloha Aina. Aloha Aina, not war. Hey, hi. And from the mom, from the mom hui, Jesse Mitchell, and the boys who are world famous now. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. good I'm kind of sweaty. Oh, no, me too. I just trying to find parking and... Oh, man. There's a group from uh, Kakako United that are gonna... Yeah, I just march. was walking behind them. And had some Mamhui people marching with yeah. them, but the guy with the red shirt said, no, no, we just want red shirts. He's like, nasty. Oh, that's, like, that's dumb. That's weird. Yeah. Anyway, here we are, not trying to... <laughs> oh. John and Jamaica Osorio will be performing here later on. Hey, Walter Reedy's here. <laughs> Show me your sign. You're live on the internet. You're live on the internet right now. That. Okay, now tell me a little bit about what that sign means. What do you mean? Uh, what's going on? What prompted the sign? Oh man, so Kauai, as you guys probably know, is ground zero for experimental herbicide crops. And we worked really hard this year um, to pass Bill 2491 to ask you to get disclosure and buffer zones around these chemical corporations. And even after we passed our bill, um, three of the chemical companies are now suing Kauai County. They want to fight for their right to keep spraying as much as they want. What post. what companies? Do you mean the big uh, chemical companies like exactly. Syngenta and Syngenta, Dupont Pioneer, and Dow Agroscience? Oh so my! Our little county of Hawaii. They they want the right to uh, spray pesticides and not tell you what it is. I guess that's right. They want to be able to continue to spray probably 22 restricted use chemicals. And they want to keep spraying them as close to neighborhoods and schools and hospitals as they please. And, you know, not only are they damaging our land and our water, but the drift, the toxic dust, um, it's having major impact on our island. Um, now, why, why are you at the uh, state legislature? So we're here today for the rally of people, not profits. Okay. And it's many groups coming together we are now a hui of hui's. Now I hear there's a bill out by some legislators that want to limit the power counties have. Now that's pretty crazy. That's, that's true. It is so crazy that they would like to negate all of the work that the counties have done, that the citizens are demanding um, and by the stroke of a pen. They'd like to make it where we can no longer ever regulate GMOs or labeling or uh, any kind of contamination or liability. Oh, right. That's what brings you here from, I guess, Kauai? Kauai, yes. Are, are there uh, bill numbers pending that people can be for or against offhand, you know? Um, one of the preemptive bills is uh, HB 2506. 2506, yeah, 2506. So we don't want that to pass. Um, on Monday, we have a labeling bill that did uh, get past its first um, committee. Uh. We really be heard again. And there's a number of really good bills, so we, we all need to work together this year. And Great. You have a website or something people can uh, look at? Absolutely. You can go to hawaiiseed.org for general um, information about GMOs. And you can go to gmofreekauai.org and sign up for our email list. Terrific. And your name is? My name is Jerry. Jerry, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Nice seeing you here. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the uh, sign. Thank you. <laughs> Kids here. Hey. You're live on the internet. <laughs> Hi. 
Hey! <laughs> I'm sweaty. That's, uh, I just hugged Catherine Gian. Uh, anything you want to say while you're live on the internet? Yes, let me hug my friends first. <laughs> okay, sure. You can come back and grab me anytime. It's Noelani Goodyear Kaupua, the Jamaica Azorio, writing lyrics, new lyric stuff. <laughs> oh, you want to tell us why? Who are you? Why are you here? Okay, my name is Catherine Gian. I'm here because I represent um, all of my labor traffic victims and human trafficking who've been trafficked onto farms that engage in GMO practices. Now how that's linked is that these uh, workers who were exploited for their labor have also been forced to spray these chemicals that are associated with GMO crop. And I know firsthand what kinds of physical effects that has on them. They're very serious, serious physical effects that don't necessarily get to the medical emergency room because they're prevented from doing so. Things like nasal tumors, brain tumors, serious chemical burns and physiological maladies. Uh, some cannot lift their arms above this level, and uh, some have also uh, suffered paralysis and death. That's wow. why I'm here. That's, that's, I, you know, I didn't connect the two, but uh, there is a connection there. Definitely a connection. With the increase of GMO technology in crops, uh, it comes a proportionate increase in the types of pesticides, noxious and restricted use pesticides, that are uh, needed to address the increase of different types of weeds, um, and invasive uh, plant species that attack these crops. Wow. So that also increases the public health factor because these pesticides are extremely noxious to the public health. Since we're here at the Capitol, uh, any uh, bill numbers to, to support or to uh, oppose? Yeah, there's a whole bunch. There's more than a dozen. So <laughs> in, order, in order to really effectively uh, view all of the bills, I suggest that you go to any one of the non-GMO Great, thank you so much. Catherine Gian, actually also running for uh, Congress in DC, the Big House Congress. And that would be uh, 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 Congressional District 1. And there's the uh, people that we were following earlier, Kakako United. Let's go uh, take a look. You're live from the uh, Rotunda. Hawaii State Capitol, where uh, the rally is just getting underway here. The government seems to go out of its way to accommodate the construction of uh, millionaires' condos. You see signs. Um, protesting the HCDA, it's a government agency. Um, I'm trying to remember the uh, what the acronym sounds uh, stands for. Hawaii Community, Honolulu Community Development Administration, I believe. That was created to fast track uh, millionaire developments in Kaka'ako. Median cost of a used house on this island, $685,000. That's a used house. That's Pono Kealoha with his camera. He's always here. He's the man. Let's get a closer look here. It's raining.
saying we need a new governor. I think we need a new government. <laughs> but that's just me. Wait, Honolulu Community Development Agency, I believe. They set up on the uh, Iolani Palace side. Alahaina. Okay, this is gonna be where the stuff takes place. I see a lot of cameras. The Lelo is here. You're live. You're live. This is Doug, and you're live. And we're walking around, and everybody else is kind of sitting there. You know what I mean? Let's take a look at some of the other groups. Maybe we can have a word. Keep country, country. Is it? Hi. Okay, taking petitions. This is uh, Turtle Bay. Is out on the, out in uh, Kahuku on the other side of the. Uh, you're live on the internet. You want to tell us a little bit of why is this uh, holding uh, money and tell us a little bit about what's going on. <laughs> okay, well, um, we're here today, um, power to the people, that's right, and we're just trying to keep rural Oahu green and agriculturally oriented as opposed to a mini Waikiki out there. We're very excited about the governors and the proposal to preserve Cabela Bay and Kohuku. We're very excited about that. They were still very concerned what the developer has in mind for his expansion and hotel. Um, as a lifelong resident of Oahu, I'm very concerned what's happening to our island. Um, in regards to Kaka'ako, it's Kaka'ako, it's not Hong Kong. I'm very, very concerned about the massive expansion that is being proposed there with no traffic improvements, no infrastructure improvements. It just sounds crazy to me. Um, I think this island could use a big moratorium on large-scale development until we figure out the carrying capacity of our beautiful, wonderful, magical island. I'm here because I love Hawaii. Great, thank you. And your name? Mark Cunningham. Thank, thank you, you, Martin. Okay, and here is the mom hui. And that's Vivian, you're live on the internet. <laughs> If we can get a back up and get a shot here. Hey, hi. Who who wants to? You're live on the internet. Who wants to tell us uh, why you're here and what's up? And uh, we're supporting people, not profits. We want the voice of the people to be heard. It's far time that the legislators. Start, stop having the backdoor meals and start listening to the people because they were appointed to listen to the people. So uh, we're here to really voice that and, and uh, hoping and praying that it happens. What's the mom hui about? What are they hui to over? Well, we are advocates to, for the uh, health and protection and safety of our keiki, the aina, and our future generations. So. Um, we are non-stop educating right now about GMOs and the effects uh, on our island community with pesticides and we are wanting labeling. We feel like mothers and consumers all have a right to know what's in their food. So, are there uh, labeling bill numbers you can tell us either to support or to uh, oppose? Well, right off the hat, I just went to a hearing for 273. Eight? I, gosh, there's so many right now. Yeah, but um, yeah. Senator Gabbard is also going to be introducing a, a Senate Bill 2176. And then we're also following um, in the House side um, 
Jessica Woolley's uh, labeling and pesticide bills. Right. So those numbers I'm getting today because I saw her yesterday and she couldn't even remember them. Off okay. The top of Every anytime you see me, we're live on the internet. You can grab me and give me oh, a yeah, number yeah, or I'll give you tell some me. Too. Tell but me what. Right there, we're having an educational talk of your right to know. Oh, let's get we'll get right up to this and we'll, so we'll this take is a look at, at it. The, the Pearl City Highlands Elementary Cafeteria. This is going to be this Friday from 6 30 to 8 30. 6 30 to 8 30. And uh, we invite the community, we've invited our legislators. Uh, this is Michi Hara's district. Ooh, he he's chair of the and Ag Committee, isn't he's he? He's chair of the Ag Committee, and he is not in favor of. Our request to label GMOs. Well, you know, he's accepted a lot of money from these GMO corporations and their lobbyists and their family members, so that might have something to do with it. <laughs> well, I think you might be right on with that, but it's, uh, he was appointed to listen to the people. That's what my dad says. So that he should be what? So he should be listening to the people and not yeah. these corporations. Is he gonna? Is he gonna come to this event? Uh, we've invited him, so we're hoping he comes to this event because we would like to teach him about GMOs. <laughs> That's great. And that is, give me the day again. So Jan it's Friday. Friday. All right. And it's 6.30 to 8.30. Great. Yeah, and your name is? Amati. I'm Amati. a local Alakai for the Oahu chapter of the Mahui with Mitsuko Hayakawa. She and I are the Alakai for this island. Great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here you go. Let's, let's check who's got the horn. The poo. Hot shells that announce uh, that and call people to uh, gather together to hear important things. We got all kinds of people here. Here's Sherry. Save our Aina from corporate greed. You're live on the internet. Anything you want to say to people? Thank you for being here and bringing the sign. Thank you so much. There are there's a growing uh, crowd here. Hello. Is it? You? Hi, you're live on the internet. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Monsanto's worst enemy is an informed public. Absolutely, the Occupy Hawaii outgrowth of the um, Occupy movement. Hey, Mike. Hey, you're live on the internet. Oh, I'm live on the internet. Yeah. Why are you here? I'm here uh, mainly for the GMOs, uh, Aole GMO, and uh, I'm moving to Kakako today, and I did not realize I'm with these guys too. <laughs> I'm actually against uh, the powers that be. They're just screwing everybody. I'm with this whole thing. Thank you, Mike. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Aloha. Commence our opening protocol, opening ceremonies. If we can ask everyone to kind of pull up a little closer on this side, kind of come together. We're going to have our uh, esteemed charter schools, Halal Lokani and Halal Pumana, lead us in our opening protocol to acknowledge and honor our ancestors, this Aina that we live upon, and to remember our culture that is rooted in this very land that we stand upon. Mahalo. And I'd really like to kind of work your way towards the stage, this area. Give us a little bit of room in front of the stage. Can we get about maybe 25 feet in front of the stage so that our charter schools can, can lead us in uh, our opening protocol? Calling upon Halau Lokari, Halau Kumana. Yeah, they're calling on a couple of uh, Hula Halau, Hula schools groups to come forward and uh, 
Hey, there's Ben. Good. Nice, nice seeing you. You're, you're live on the internet. <laughs> Waiting. We are at the state capitol, if you just joined us. Waiting for uh, the rally to begin. There's been a call for uh, to Hula Halau to come forward into this area and lead uh, the group. Halau right now we're looking uh, I see. I for think our I see. esteemed Here's, uh, community Halau. leader. Here's uh, Chairman Kumu of Inale, the uh, Moana. Burial Council, Kumu at Halau Lokahi. He's introducing. Hinale Moana, Kaluwa. Hinale Moana, Wong Kalu. Entering on the backside of uh, leading Halau, Halau Kumana, our esteemed uh, community organizer, Kumu. And organizer, annual organizer of La Hoi Hoi Ea, Kumo Imai Kalani Winchester. Live at the state capitol, about to open the People Not Profits rally. A lot of groups here across that's uh, GMO, GMO Free Hawaii. Kaka'ako United has a Stop HCDA sign, Honolulu Community hey, Development like Agency. Uh, we're very happy and uh, honored to be here uh, once again to raise voice for the people to the legislators here at the state capitol. Um, before we begin our program, uh, we're going to take the necessary time we need to honor our queen, Lili Uopalani, who in January 17, 1893, as the last reigning monarch, was dethroned uh, by a small group, uh, an oligarchy that existed here in Hawaii. And I think today we stand here still opposing that oligarchy. Um, so to bring foundation to the program today, uh, we're going to have our two charter schools, Halau Lokahi, as well as Halau Kumana New Century Public Charter School, two Hawaiian schools that are in desperate need of equitable funding, of facilities usage, uh, and are battling every single day to give the best education to our Hawaiian kids founded in Hawaiian culture. Um, there are bills that will be uh, circulating through the legislature this year that are going to affect charter schools. So we ask everyone here to spread the word about our charter schools and the good work that we're doing in the community. Um, right now, we, uh, we're going to have everybody's attention um, be directed to the statue of our queen, Lili Kalani. at which point our two charter schools are going to do a quick presentation to honor the queen, to honor her model, her last command to her people, Oni Pa'a, and to show everybody here that we have not forgotten, we have not given up the traditions of our ancestors gone by. So if you could, I'm going to ask everybody if we could shift our direction that way. Um, we're going to begin our ceremony. Once the ceremony is pulled, uh, we'll begin our program. Um. <laughs> At this present time, then, if we can kind of get perhaps uh, the Lahui to kind of maybe head this way onto this dais right here, uh, uh, facing facing the queen on this side. Who is that? He's gonna be right here on the platform. Oh, you got right up. Okay. okay. Let's kind of shift this way. Right there, this open area.
Aina kai no ano kumura ni o makala kuwa la eiroi. Aina kai no ano kumura ni. Aina kai no ano kumura ni o makala kuwa la eiroi. Aba. Eiro no tui o kala ni.
singing to the uh, statue of uh, Queen de Leo Colony standing right there. We got a great crowd. At this time, if we get um, everyone to uh, get back to stage, this uh, side of the stage, stage central, we're going to uh, go up, open our, uh, up into the uh, front. See, uh, we'll get a good seat, see what's uh, going to happen here. Back here, ways, and we'll walk up toward the front. We are in the rotunda of the, the state capitol. This is where the um, I'm going to have to lay this down one second here. Hey, hi. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hi. Adam, yeah. uh, I, I'm from the uh, Facebook there. Right, right. Yeah, Great Adam, meeting yeah. you. We're, we're live on the um, oh. internet at the moment, right. so this is pretty good. Yeah, man. So why are you here? You can, you can, I can interview you. Tell me uh, who you are and why you're here. Uh, my name is Adam, and uh, I've uh, been, been active in struggles uh, in Florida. Um, oh, I've okay. got a job out here, so we're new. Uh, I'm living out in Waianae. Oh, okay. And uh, so I don't make it into Honolulu much. But I saw you post this event, so I came to check it out. Oh, all right, yeah, great, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. That was an impressive uh, yeah. opening by those yeah. uh, halal Yeah, it was so. absolutely. That was wonderful. So. Great. Well, I nice. We wanted to make it down to uh, where is Thomas? Thomas Square. Thomas Thomas Tom Square Thomas is Square. down this way, maybe a not even a mile. Oh, okay. You know? So I'll have to walk that way before I get out of here. Sundays, food not bomb. I, know, I, late, I work Sundays. Late afternoon to early evening. No, that's is that what bad. it is? Yeah. Okay. yeah. There used to be an encampment the there for Deoccupy Honolulu. Okay. Since uh, Thanksgiving, they've yeah. kind of taken a little vacation after like two and a half years, two years. But uh, always have a food not bomb since Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Late afternoon to early evening. Yep. Well, if I get off one of these Sundays, I'll come. Great, great. And we'll keep you in the loop if there are any special stuff, you know, I follow, Facebook. I follow a lot of your stuff, so Great. I wanted to make it in for the, uh, the last hearing where they canceled. He, he right. had the bill, and then he pulled yeah. it back, yeah. but uh, I couldn't That's make great. it. That's great. Okay, let's see. Free. Yeah, and if there's anything on going out on, we're on the west side. So, you, know, so you know, there's stuff happening out there, so you should have to let me know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking around, but I haven't been able to find it. I'm gonna, you know what you can do? You can kind of. I have to tie my shoe base. Yeah, you can. Know, if you can <laughs> hold this, <laughs> I got you. you know? Holding a camera at the same time. Thank you very much. So maybe you can explain to me a little bit about the different groups here. Yeah, this is kind of a coalition of, of different groups basically trying to get the legislature to uh, listen to a number of things. One is a lot of like anti-GMO groups, GMO labeling groups, groups that are trying to uh, involve with uh, land and affordable living and farming and that sort of thing. So. A lot of uh, Hawaiian sovereignty type groups yeah. that um, want uh, that that um, are against all this accommodation to millionaire developers instead of uh, you know the actual people that live here. Yeah. So that's kind of the uniting thing. I was at the rally. It's patterned after a rally that happened in 1971, where they had 5,000 people in this kind of. Uh, to try to stop uh, millionaire development, and have more consideration for the uh, Native Hawaiian claims and population and that sort of thing. So. It sort of coincided in the time period with uh, a lot of the, the Native American right. resurgence. Right. So. Okay, well, 
I'm going to go walk around. Yeah, I'll see you around. Consciousness was fully overturned, cause change. Yeah, they, 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 we needed to um, to emphasize that something wasn't right. We needed change. So that was 1971. Collaboration between Kokua Hawaii, Save Our Surf, and the, the community at large. And we want to continue this legacy. We want to build on this legacy. People, not profits. Fully causing change for the betterment of our community and our Lahui. At this point, um, I'm going to turn it over to, to Elima. He's going to talk a little bit about um, our group and the, the organizing of this event. Um, so let's stand proud in this legacy from 1971. People, not profits. Mahalo. Aloha, my Kako. Aloha. I'm loving all the signs out there. All of you who brought signs, let's hold them up high. Yeah. Save our Aina from corporate greed. Whoa. Get Monsanto out. Choose a charter. So much mana in this rotunda today, and it's awesome that we're coming together. I want to talk a little bit about mana, one of the uh, co-organizers of this group. Um, we are a group that advocates for and believes in full Hawaiian independence. We also do so with a strong social consciousness. It's critical that we continue to exercise our political muscles to address the suffering of our aina and people today as we fight for a, a broader, better Hawaii tomorrow. A uh, movement for Aloha no Ka Aina is a movement building organization. It means many people coming together. Established to achieve independence and social justice through direct action, political education, economic development, international diplomacy and public advocacy with a cultural and spiritual foundation is why we start things off the way that we did today. Mana follows in the history of Aloha Aina in Hawaii in the tradition of peoples throughout the world who struggle for liberation, freedom, and justice. We value kue, resistance, kukulu, creating alternatives. We value people power, collectivity, community honesty and integrity, and fundamental human dignity. The reason we are here today, we are so happy to be connecting with all of these grassroots organizations that are fighting for people, aina, and our mo'opuna. And we understand that the corporate exploitation that brings us all together today of aina and people is what has defined our struggle for over 120 years. The overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom had everything to do with corporate power coming in and seizing this place for themselves. And we welcome the legacy of struggle. We are honored and proud to con continue the unity and the struggle um, with everybody here today. So mahalo for coming, and Noi's gonna talk a little bit more about um, what brings us together before we get our grassroots State of the State address from Kumu Kale Koa Kael. the status quo is unacceptable and that another Hawaii is possible. Another Hawaii is possible, a Hawaii where people, not profits, 
determine the health of our lands, our waters, and our communities. So we are here today, and you'll hear from various groups speaking today um, about what the issues are that are going on and what they'd like you to stand behind. And I'm just going to quickly go through a few of those reasons. We are here today together to stand in solidarity for genuine food security. No. Food security that puts public health above corporate profits. No. We are here today for home rule at the county level. We're here to say that people at the ground level should be making decisions about the health of their lands and communities, and that those communities should be shielded from frivolous corporate legal attacks like Monsanto's. We are here for the protection of our sacred sites of places like Mauna Awa Kea, one of the people of this place, for the sands of Makua and Mokapu, from the protection of these places from rampant overdevelopment and militarization. We are here to protect our ability as people to connect with those places, to keep our, our relationships, to keep singing our mele and dancing our hula for those places, to keep um, worshiping our akua, to keep burying the people of our new generations and honoring the iri pupuna who are buried there, to maintain those connections and be unobstructed by things like phased archaeological reviews or the corporate development of um, industrial development uh, telescopes right. or military and drone testing which you'll hear about uh, today. We're also here for affordable housing so that present and future generations can continue to live here in our home where we love. We're here as our first speaker will also um, tell you about, and as Ilima indicated, to also remind us that Hawaiian people need to have the full options for political self-determination and independence. So as people are here giving this grassroots view of the state of uh, the, the state, meaning the conditions of Hawaii today, remember that use your voice to help support them and for all of us to join together to say that another Hawaii is possible. A Hawaii that is for people, not profits. Aloha, mahalo. At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce our, um, our primary speaker for the day who's gonna give us uh, our, our grassroots state of the state, yeah? Or perhaps even state of the nation state. Because we all know whose lands we stand upon. Yeah? Yeah. What we're talking about fundamentally is a sovereignty issue for Kanaka Maoli today. And this, so without any uh, further ado, I'd like to introduce my esteemed friend, mentor to many of us, Kumu to many of us. One of our Brilliant Hawaiian educators, <laughs> activists, analysts, Kalekoa <laughs> Kaeo. Aloha. 
As I begin, let me just kind of share a little bit for us to understand. Speaking to our Kanaka, our Lahui Kanaka, first of all. We have been here in these islands for nearly 2,000 years. Before there was an America, before many of the European countries came out of the caves, that's true. We had sailed the ocean blue to come here as a people. To come to the most remotest spot on this planet. And when we came here, we found one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful place on the earth. And it is here we grew a great civilization. One where there was no homeless people. One where there were no people who slept hungry. One where there was no children. They were left out in the rain. But the reality for us today as a people, this is the conditions for how many of our people suffer to this day. And so the main purpose for me here today is to remind us the Lahu'i, we have never always been in this condition. This is a condition which has been imposed on our people. This is a condition which has shackled our people. This is a condition which oppresses our people every day. But have no fear. Because the good news is, even with all that has been put on us, there is not a place on the planet that is as militarized, missionized, commodified as this place here in Hawaii. And yet, our Kiki still sing and dance the songs of our people. As the great saying goes, the strongest people, oh sorry, the strongest swimmers swim in the roughest seas. Never forget that, because if that's the best they got, we already got them licked. But we also must remember in our history, especially for Lahui Kanaka, it is said that there is nearly between 800 to a mil, 800,000 to a million people at one time lived upon these islands, self-sufficient and sustainable. And by the overthrow of 1893, we were down to a mere 40,000. So roughly only one in 20 survived. Only about 5% of our people made it through to 1893. So all of you who have the Koko Hawaii, Lahui Kanaka, you can never forget. See, our lives are not cheap. Our lives are not cheap. Because from the 5%, we are still here. And the good news, we are still growing. And when I Kupuna came, we come from people out of who were very innovative, were able to adapt, understood scientific principles and technology. And see, if you, if you understand that, you realize, you know, it's easy to go back where you came from before versus trying to go on a new journey. So for many of us, it is really about reawakening this understanding. Ho'ala. I'm born and raised on the island of Maui. Proud graduate of a great missionary named school, Henry Perrine Baldwin High School. But my family, we have been there from time immemorial. I continue to live there and I hope my children will continue to live on there where I raised two children. So we're not going anywhere as a people. We will endure, we will only pop. So as I like to say to the governor's office and those who will power over our people at this time, to remember, we as the people are here for a long haul. We've been here for 2,000 years and we will be here for 2,000 more. And with that, 
that let me just jump into the so-called state of the state address provided by Governor Newt Abercrombie a couple of weeks back or a week ago. At first I took Mahalo, Kayak, you know, Kaua Kukalahare, this famous reign of Kutolulu, which has come to bless us today. Aloha. But what is so astounding, let me ask you, what did the governor say about Native Hawaiians in his address? He said nothing. Did not mention one word. Did not talk about who we are as a people and what it means here in Hawaii. We have been erased in the politics of the governor. We have been thrown to the side. We have been ignored. But there's two reasons for that I want you to think about. The first, of course, is that they already see the situation and condition of us Hawaiians as being something that has been cleansed from them. He's probably looking at efforts, whether through Kanai Olovalu, whether through the $200 million so-called settlement with Office of Hawaiian Affairs, which ended, in their eyes, the question of Hawaiian self-determination. Or, I believe, is true fear. He's fearful of addressing the Hawaiian concerns because he knows and the state and the power holders know the core to the resistance of what is going on in Hawaii is the Hawaiian voice. This voice is the voice which will challenge which is challenging the powers to be in their efforts from not just wiping out the so-called Hawaiian question, but to continue to profit over our so-called demise and our uh, treatment as being inhuman. But with that, we should always realize Although they may think of us as something in antiquity, as artifacts of Hawaii's history, that somehow they have moved on beyond the Hawaiian question, we are here to remind them again that we are here. And we are putting them on public notice, on public notice, that we are organizing, that we are reawakening, and that we will in fact fight, and we will struggle, and we will resist and we will be in fact victorious in the end. We also must analyze and understand some basic facts about the situation. The Hawaiian people are under a system of domination. We are a dominating people. They are dominators. And so whenever we analyze the situation, we cannot forget that the dominators, their main purpose is to keep the domination going. Their main goal is for the dominated to buy into being dominated. That is the purpose, that is the game, that is the challenge in which we have. But we need to say, although we recognize we are dominated, we're not here to ask for a longer leash. We're not here to ask for a cleaner cage. We are here to say that we will be free. We are here to say that we are fighting for the righteousness of Ka'ea o Ka'aina. Remember these famous words. Everybody say, Ea. 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 O Ka'aina. The word Ea. It's a powerful word. It is the life. It is the sovereignty, the independence, that the power to rule and govern and to manage. But our kupuna gave us, gave us this great, not just message, but instructions. You see, many people get caught up in thinking when they, when they talk about our political rights, they get caught up with the idea 
it's about a settlement of money or it's about entitlements or it's about the right to develop it's in some kind of constitutional government it's in some kind of name list but the eo okaina is the lesson see whenever we fight and organize for the protection of the aina that which feeds us we provide this humanity to our own selves that is our political voice every time we defend the aina we take a step forward eoka aina is the challenge for all of us here today and look at all the various organizations that are here it's really about the people retaking control of this eoka aina and not be foolishly led into discussions or ideas which take us away from really what's most important see a lot of these lessons were provided from us for us yeah as we know in the mele aipohaku aipohaku eat the wondrous rocks the food of the land what will make us as a lawhui kanaka live on for 2000 years is not a bigger bankroll it's not a longer list of names it's the control of the air okaina it's being on the land it's providing shelter and food to our people that's the direction we must always remember to head for and not be misled down paths which only confuse us and only re-supports the continued domination of our people We also should realize that there's this illusion of dependency, this idea that Governor Abercrombie knows what's best for the Lahui Kanaka. Then he knows fairly, more judiciously, how we should look at the land. See, but the illusion is something as an illusion that by truth will be dissolved by organizing will be put to the side and more purposely by unity amongst the different voices will be dismantled see Aloha Aina is subversive Aloha Aina is subversive to the power structure as it is today you know those who are talking about the second and third BMW hiding in gated communities talking about a second uh, jacuzzi Aloha Aina challenges that because you cannot have gated communities and talk about Aloha Aina you cannot have the military in Makua poisoning our people's land and talk about Aloha Aina you cannot talk about imposing monuments and structures of the colonial settler on our most sacred mountains and not talk about Aloha Aina. In fact, let me give you an example on Maui. When we were struggling, or still struggling over the question of the ATST or the Advanced Technology Solar Telescope. And I met with the head person for the National Science Foundation and I asked them directly and I told them, you know, the great Mahatma Gandhi said this one of the seven sins is science without humanity science without humanity and I asked him what is the humanity in this telescope? Kanaka to scientists and his response was this this is for pure selfish research that's the truth that is the truth so we talk about building up on a city I always say this too I'm not opposed I honestly would say I would not be opposed to building upon those sacred mountains if I knew as a Kanaka that would save a million lives perhaps it would provide shelter to a people you know because I, I can suffer 
for the betterment of mankind. As our kupuna have taught us, kapu kiola na kani. Life is sacred to kani. Life is the most sacred ideology of our people. But for pure selfish research, you're going to take our most sacred mountains? That's a slap in our face. But the question is, what are we going to do about it? You see, that's the point. How are we going to resist it? What are we going to do? As you heard in the governor's address, that was one of the talking points. $1.2 billion project. See, the profiteers are coming in. The fat cats are getting their, their wallets ready. Their motivation is the profiteering off of our demise. But see, for Lahawi Kanak, I say this, we got a secret weapon. And the secret weapon is the ideology of Aloha Aina. The secret weapon is that for Kanaka, the Lahui Kanaka, we have no choice. We can only resist and fight back. See, that's why we don't have any other options. Because we understand if we don't fight back now, if we don't resist now, if we don't struggle now, we will be gone in 20 years. We will be assimilated in 20 years. We will become artifacts in 20 years. And we will become, you know, uh, posters and something you see uh, in, in, in tourism uh, galleries. See, so, but, but for me, I'm a big believer. Because we have no choice in this secret weapon, and because we have these lessons provided us from our kupuna, it will lead us to struggle into the future. It will provide us the means by which we will be able to organize and mobilize and do whatever is necessary to protect Ke'el o Ka'ina. <clears throat> and I'm here to say also, as the state of the state address, that the governor and the state of Hawaii recognize that they are in conflict of interest, of course, whenever they're talking about Hawaiian issues. How can the state of Hawaii, through the governor's office, negotiate with a state agency via the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to settle our interests as the Lahui Kanaka? How can one pocket negotiate with the other? See, this can only happen if you foolishly believe that is the only option. <clears throat> and we should also realize, like that supposed purported settlement, and one of the lessons I want everybody to realize, especially Lao Hui Kanak and everybody else here to understand, for the Hawaiian people, we do not have an economic problem. I want you guys to pay attention. We don't have an economic problem. We have a political problem. Yeah. You have to realize this. The Kamehameha schools alone is worth between six and ten billion dollars, whether it's a good day at the stock market. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs has hundreds of million dollars. And then you add to this, of course, our lands. Nearly two million acres of land in these islands which belong to our people. These are Hawaiian Kingdom, Crown and Government lands. Belong to our people. And fat cats are profiting off of using this, these lands to service their own interests. So part of the reawakening of, of course is to understand. As Hawaiians, we gotta organize ourselves right now. We got to look and plan on how we will take back these resources for us under our control. How we look at these lands and return to our people. Because yeah? we no longer can look at the state government to somehow have the better interest at hand for our people. So there will be a transition of power. It has already begun.
One of the lessons of the great Elijah Muhammad I want to share today also. And he talks about organizing. And of course his great pupil, Malcolm X said, the greatest mistake in organizing a sleeping people is you have to first wake them up to their humanity, their heritage, and then you get action. He says, Elijah Muhammad also said, if you train people to drink out of a dirty glass of water, and their whole lives have been drinking out of this dirty glass of water, they may not realize they're drinking out of a dirty glass of water. And see, part of our role here, all of us here, Kako, is to showcase First of all, that that glass is dirty, but even better, here is a clean glass of water from which you can drink. You see, people by the common nature, if you give them the choice, will not choose to drink that from the dirty glass. They will choose to drink from the clean glass. Even if you add malolo syrup or, you know, Gatorade or I don't know sugar into that dirty glass people automatically would realize and for the first time would realize that all this time they've been drinking from our dirty glass and so we we as the voices of people we must show our people the clean glass of water the better way a way for us all of us can enjoy the future of these islands so what are we talking about kanai olovalo which is the state's initiative. Be clear about that. This is the state of Hawaii's initiative. You don't believe me? Go check who signed the legislation. Go check who appoints the so-called list commissioners. Let me ask you in the Kanaiolo Valo legislation, how many acres of land? How many acres of land? How many gallons of water? So you got to be clear. No land, no water, no life, no air, no future. See, especially when we already understand that that's our land. Especially when we understand self-determination depends on the self. And I don't know how Governor Abercrombie snuck in to become the self and the voice of Hawaiian people. The other hand also is it's up to us, it's our kuleana to take back. See, the organizing of our people is for us to do. Yeah? And so, as I shared in Maui last week, and I hear some of the voices saying, oh, but Kaleko, i tired of waiting. And as I respond, well, I'm tired of you waiting. Because if you're waiting, I don't want to know you. This is not about waiting. This is about doing. This is about organizing. This is about teaching. This is about sharing. This is about stepping forward as a people. We're not stepping back. We're moving forward. And so I know my, my, my time is up and stuff, and I just went to... <clears throat> Let me just skip to my last couple pages here. <laughs> but I want to also touch upon this. One of the key elements for me here is the spirit and understanding of lokahi, the unity. Whether we're Kanaka or non-Kanaka, the only way we can challenge and defeat the profiteers is if we work together. The only way we can move forward for a better Hawaii is if we share and listen to one another. The only way we can reclaim the future and destiny of our people is that we gotta be able to sit and share. We may not believe in everything that is shared, but we, under, we gotta understand this lesson. Our disunity guarantees their future. Our disunity will guarantee their future. However, our unity, our unity will bring about the future that we all want.
let me just add, finally, <laughs> to remind ourselves from the words that were provided by our kupuna. Very short prophecy chant that was given that we all know. Yes, we can say it together. E piyano. Oh, sorry, I already make havoc. You see. E ihoana o luna. E piyana o lalo. E huyana na moku. E kuana kapaya. E ihoana o luna. E piyana o lalo. E huyana na moku. E kuana kapaya. E ihoana o luna. E piyana o lalo. E huyana na moku. E kuana kapaya. Wamau keea oka aina ika pono. Eola kako. At this time, um, keep our energy going. I want to introduce um, 
the inspiration, the inspiration behind this uh, People Not Profits 2014, uh, our, uh, one of our forefathers as well of Hawaiian activism and Hawaiian rights and doing what is right, um, all the way from Molokai, Uncle Walter Reed. All right, well, so my job today is to begin to introduce the rest of the speakers. We have a whole bunch of speakers, and I'm going to ask the, the people who are doing the talking for the GMO issue to start coming up on the stage if they could. This issue, I think, is a great issue because it really amplifies why we are here today. So for me, one of the big reasons why we're here today is we have come today to begin the process of taking back this house. This is your house. This is the people's house. We are here to let them know that this house belongs to the people. This is a grassroots people gathering today, a grassroots rally, and we want to make that really clear that we are tired of this house being controlled by the corporations that have come to Hawaii. The corporations that are on our farmlands, the corporations that are taking over Waikiki, the farmlands that are taking over our media, I mean the corporations that are taking over our media. These people are controlling the rest of us. This 1% is controlling the 99% and we are sick and tired of that happening. We want control. The people want control over this building. This building is the people's building. We need to come here over and over and make sure that this building belongs to the people. Those people in these rooms, all of those doors that are closed, those people should be serving you, protecting you, not the corporations. They're behind the doors talking to these lobbyists and corporations. They should be talking and listening to the people. And that's what this rally is all about. So I'd like to bring up the people that have been involved in the GMO issue and have them come up here on the stage. Gary, can you bring the rest of everybody to come up and support you? Come up here on the stage, everybody. Whoever is coming up to talk about the GMO issue. So how about a big round of applause for all those fighting to keep you healthy, to keep our lands healthy, and to control corporations that call themselves farmers. They are not farmers. They are chemical companies using you as guinea pigs in their experiments on our farmland. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Walter. Aloha, everybody. Aloha, Kauai. I want to thank everybody for coming here today. And this banner you see up here is from the battle we have on Kauai with, with the largest chemical companies in the world. Okay, these companies came to our island, they come to our state, and they dump tons and tons of poisonous pesticides in our community. Okay, on Kauai, people are getting sick. People are ill. The doctors there are concerned. We ask these companies, what are you spraying? And they won't tell us. Worse than that, they lie to us. Okay? They lie to us. They won't tell us what they're doing. They won't help us figure out the problem. And so we introduced a bill on Kauai, you said, uh, hospital, hospital, Bill 2491, and we fought these companies in the smallest county of Hawaii, and we won. Okay? We won. Okay, to win, to win, these people up here from Kauai slept on the sidewalks overnight to testify at the hearing. Okay? They slept on the sidewalk time after time. The chemical companies, the chemical chemical companies hired homeless people to hold their place in line. Okay, they paid them two hundred dollars a night to hold them place in line. These chemical companies bought ads in the newspaper, ads on the radio. They did fake telephone polls. They hired community people in our to, to attack us. They got the governor to support their position. They got legislators to support their position. We said 
we're going to fight until we win and we won. And today there's a law on Kauai that if they don't tell us what they're spraying, if they spray next to schools, they can go to jail. And our community did that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we won. We won fair and square. We won fair and square. The council voted. We overrode the mayor's veto. And we won. And now what happens? These companies are suing the people of Kauai. Okay? They're suing the people of Kauai for the right to spray poisons next to schools. Okay? And to them, we say, shame on you. Shame! So help me. Help me with that. Shame on you. 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 So thank you. So next, so we're going to fight them in court, and we're going to fight them all the way to the end. But that's not enough for these companies. Okay, these companies have gone to the legislature and introduced bills to take away the power of the counties, to take away the hard work that our community did, the work that's done on that in Hawaii County, work that's being done all over the state. And so we're asking the legislators here not to support those bills, not to support those bills and support the people of Kauai. So, okay, it's people of Kauai, people of Maui, people of Hawaii County. Okay. This is about, some people will say this is about GMOs. This is not about GMOs. This is about people over profits. Yes. Okay, people over profits. The same people, the same arguments, whether it's Kaka'ako or Turtle Bay, or whether it's windmills on Lanai or fracking in Hawaii County, it's the same thing. It's about money stepping on people and the environment. And we have to stick together. We have to fight this. We have to work together for the future. Send a message to these people up here. Thank you all very, very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. We have two, two people. A lot of people will tell me, Gary, you know, you're a politician, you're a council member. We're really happy that you're doing what you're doing. There are, there are other people, several, many other people who are working the good fight in this building and around our community. Today we have two examples of that, two shining examples of young, motivated people who are willing to stand up to the big corporations. We have, first of all, I'm going to introduce Representative Connelly E from Maui who's going to speak, and then I have Councilmember Cochran from Maui who's going to speak. So let's give it up for them. For the good work they're doing. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you everyone for coming out. Um, this is why I do what I do. It's not, you know, I'm not really a big fan of the political tacticianeering, um, the, you know, closed rooms. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not that good at that, but, uh, you know, this is why the building is here. It's your building. There's no other place in the nation where you can walk in a state capitol, sing, sing songs and give speeches in the building with everybody watching. It's, it's really incredible. I wrote, I wrote it out so I don't forget it. One of my earliest memories is as a toddler, my grandma used to slap my wrist whenever I got too curious about what something is. She told me not to put anything in my mouth unless I knew where it came from. Some weekends, I'll escort my grandma grocery shopping. I'll take her in Pukalani. And I asked her one time, hey grandma, did you know that that's cereal in your cart? General Mills? Did you know that chips in your cart, Frito-Lay, did you know those are genetically modified? She goes, boy, where did they say that? <laughs> you see, unless Dr. Oz showed her how to decipher GMO barcodes, and she brought her reading glasses with her, to Foodland, she would never know what is GMO. I'm not even going to talk about labeling because that's it right there. It's the right to know. I love my grandma. But I'm here to talk about HB 2506 and SB 3056 and the future of Hawaii agriculture. Most scientists do agree. Well, first off, I think it's very disingenuous that people are framing this argument as science versus emotion because th there's a lot of unfounded emotion 
on one side, and there's a lot of science on this side as well. Most scientists do agree that there's a that is clear that the long-term effects of GMO are nebulous. The technology has been rushed out of the labs and into our diets. The GMO experiment was cleverly sold expeditiously to policymakers as the force that will save agriculture and end world hunger. However, independent studies and analysis have shown that actual benefits have fallen far short of expectations. They just haven't performed as promised. As far as crop improvements are concerned, biotech research has picked all the low-hanging fruit, so increased improvements are becoming more difficult to come across because it requires fighting nature and biodiversity. Average yields are not significantly higher than or organic crops and droughts, and in droughts, organic crops actually boast even higher yields. Existing improvements are now proving to be unsustainable as super weeds and pests adapt to mutated genes. Regardless of the lack of short-term effects, most scientists at least accept GMO potential to produce new allergens and toxins, spread harmful traits to weeds and non-GE crops, or harm animals that consume them. And these are from peer-reviewed studies. So as long as a question mark looms over GMO, no one has the right to use the people of Hawaii as guinea pigs. No one has the right to roll dice on the future of our Aina and the entire integrity of life on our planet. And no one has the right to strip control of the future of our beloved islands from the hands of the people of every island. We must control our own agricultural future. Thankfully, thanks to you folks, that's exactly what's been happening from county to county. Last year, the people of Kauai and Hawaii counties won some hard-fought battles for transparency and accountability from biotech seed companies. And a new push for more pesticide disclosure, thank you, Councilmember Cochrane, is now making its ways through Maui County. However, new bills to revoke home rule, reverse regulations, and strip, them of, and strip counties of the power to regulate GMOs is being shoved through the legislature by pro-GMO special interests. And we cannot stand by and let this happen. We cannot, let a, we cannot let a few silence the voices of many. No one knows the Aina better than the people who live on it, the people who live from it. And no matter what your stance is on GMO, allowing the county to determine the future of their own agriculture is simply the right thing to do. You see, we're not creating fear. We're actualizing what's fair. But I will concede that maybe some passionate GMO opponents do sometimes exaggerate GMO harm and cite non-peer review studies. A lobbyist told me, these people need to stop fear-mongering. So I thought about that. I even nodded a little. I was like, oh. Um. But I told the lobbyist, maybe if you didn't push so hard against labeling, the community wouldn't be so afraid. Someone may actually believe your science if you weren't so obviously, outwardly, ashamed of your products. So if it's fair to say that, cons that the concerned public exploits fear, then it's fair to say that the biotech lobby exploits ignorance. As someone who heard their best arguments, trust me, they come to my office all the time, the biotech lobby got bad science down to a science. <laughs> and to make sure that we're not operating on pure emotion, I'll end with some facts about the future of agriculture. 60% or over 60% of the world's seed for all crops come from just three companies. Just three companies. Chemical companies. One point, we have 1.5 times enough food to feed the entire planet, more than we need. It's not about feeding the world. GMO is not about feeding the world. They're not, they're not gonna make the blind see and the lame walk. No, it's about chemical companies selling chemicals. That's it, yep. The future of agriculture isn't in sterilizing our soil with one-use 
and using one-time use seeds and crops. It's about regenerative agriculture, sustainable pest management, improved logistics to move food to the hungry, increasing buying power by alleviating deep poverty, and returning to the subsistent ways of my native Hawaiian ancestors. And it's about community involvement. It's about people like you. Last year, the notorious PLDC was repealed because of people like you. Hawaii's House of Representatives became the first chamber in the nation to pass a GMO labeling bill because of people like you. And two years ago, a 23-year-old nobody who was outspent $40,000 to $5,000 in the primary election became the youngest elected official ever from Maui because of people like you. Anything is possible with the power of people like you. And the only ones who can stop these preemption bills are people like you. So, so um, get involved. Uh, you know, Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Right now, if you can get your phones out, there's a petition that um, I linked to that could use all more signatures. I need you to join me to urge my colleagues in the state legislature to preserve home rule, speak out on the Hawaii State GMO preemption bills, and let the counties control their own agro agricultural future. Follow so much for coming out. I'm very, very honored to be here. My name is Ellie Cochran, and I am the West Maui County Council Rep. And um, I'm really excited to be here and want to thank each and every one of you for what you do and what you stand for. And on the ending note of Kaniela, um, you know, to take away home rule from the counties really is a disservice to the people who got me into this seat as a county representative. And learning from Kauai and their efforts and their fight I have introduced a similar bill into um, for Maui County in regards to disclosure. We have the right to know right. what it is the companies and uh, you know the pesticides and then whatnot are doing to us. But if we don't have a baseline information to start from and start gathering, perhaps Ill, Ill, you know health effects, then there's how how are we going to determine it? But I want to thank Gary Hoosier, Councilmember Hoosier, for coming to Maui and assisting me and guiding, because um, it's a fight. They've gone through the, you know, through the ropes, and um, he's helping me and urging Maui County along. But again, we, I'm here for you. We are, we are a, you know, I am in service to you folks, and so I want to make sure that you know your voice is heard and that I'm there representing the people, not the profits. And that's what this rally is about. And um, I, got into, I got into politics, and maybe it's not a real politician way of doing it, but for our Aina, for, for our oceans, for our keiki, for our future, for our culture. And it's not about fame, fortune, and glory whatsoever. And when I see that being tampered with, when I see that being, being um, threatened, then I fight back. And I do it. And I do it in the way that I can on the seat that I hold and through the county level. But again, as the, the HB and the SBs are trying to push through, they want to take that away, the power of the county. You know, I represent the ground level grassroots movement. And if that's stripped away, then what's left? It's the profits, it's the corporations that want to overrule and, um, you know, misguide. And I, it's unfortunate. But I think today we all come together and it's about awareness and education. It's awesome to see the schools, the keikis here, and it is about education and awareness. And you know, if it doesn't happen the first time around, it's okay, we're growing. And the consciousness of what is right, what is pono for our land, for our keiki future, is going to grow and continue to grow. And I'm so happy and excited and, and um, proud to be a part of it. So I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time, but again, mahalo for being here. I'm Ellie Cochran from Maui County. I just want to, on a closing note, um, our meeting yesterday, my first introduction of the bill, pesticide bill, um, got continued to Friday, 9 a.m., Maui County Council Chambers, 
public testimony portion is left open. So, <laughs> if anybody wants to come and support Maui County, by all means, please come on down. We appreciate your support. Mahalo, everyone. Take care. All right, we have one more speaker. But before we do, I want to I wanna ask your help. Okay, there's a, a dozen of us, maybe two dozen that flew over from Kauai. We want to wake this building up. Okay, we need your help. Okay, we want you to help me say, shame on you. 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 Okay, okay, that's the first message. Okay, shame on you, Syngenta Pioneer Monsanto pursuing the county of Kauai. Shame on the legislators who would purport to take away our authority and our community empowerment. Okay, the second message is we will win. Okay, we will win. And the next speaker I have today is Dustin Barker. Dustin knows about winning. Okay, Dustin started this. He's a winner. So help me out with that. We will win. 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 It's awesome to see everybody come together against the corporate takeover of Hawaii that's going on right now. We're all here, uh, different walks of life, different fights in Hawaii, but all against the same entities. We got the largest chemical corporations in the world using our islands as an experimental test site. Does anybody out there find anything wrong with that? Yeah. Our, everything we love is being threatened. The health of our children, the health of our land, the health of our ocean. We live in the most self-sustainable place on earth. Yet we're importing 90% of our food into Hawaii. While all our ag land is being used by these chemical corporations. So, we got a lot of problems here, right? But it's not about the problems, it's all about the solutions. So what's the solutions? Grow our own food. Let's become an independent state of Hawaii. And stop being so dependent on the government and the corporations that are running this show now. It's time for us, the people of Hawaii, to start running the show. Why are we paying our taxes? To be run over by the people we pay? No way. It's time for us to take back our power. Our power as taxpayers. Our power as Hawaiians. Our power as human beings. We're being run over by money. When the most important things are sitting right in front of our face. So, this is a start. It's all a start. The last two years have been a huge start for us, but we need to lock arms statewide, connect the chain. The only answer for our problems here is unity, uniting together. That's the only way anything has ever. ever come to good solutions, conclusions, you know what I mean? You look at history, history repeats itself, they say, huh? You gotta look at who was successful in making a better future for where they live. We cannot just sit around complaining about the problems. We need to be hands-on, locking arms, getting involved, uniting, coming from the heart. That's when we're coming from the heart. And we're fighting with love and not hate. And we're fighting for what is right against what is wrong. Then there's no, there's no doing wrong. Okay? So mahalo everybody for coming out. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of the fight. And this is just beginning. There's a great future for us here in Hawaii. And it's only the beginning. So mahalo. Imua and be the change.
We are live at the Hawaii State Capitol. People, not profits, really. Up on stage now is Walter Ritty. All right, we have another speaking group. These are the guys in the red shirts. Kaka'ako, the urban people that are fighting back, trying to gain control of their area, their Ahupuan, Kaka'ako. So, we want to ask them to come up. On our list we have Sharon Moe Rocky. And Rob Iwani. They're going to be talking to you about what is happening right down the road here in Kaka'ako. Some big things are happening. Here they are. much. I am from Kaka'ako and uh, I represent the, the people who live, work, play, and love Kaka'ako. We are very concerned. Uh, those of us that you see here uh, are from Kaka'ako. We support Kaka'ako because it's a beautiful place. You must visit. I think Walter says he doesn't even want to come to Honolulu, but <laughs> you must visit because this is one of the last places that we have that we must save. And what we want to do is to have the HCDA, the Hawaii Community Development Authority, which is like the PLDC that your group, the Hawaii Alliance, brought down last year, is the same kind of group that is not listening to the community. We have gone there, we have tried to negotiate, we have tried to talk to them about what's important, we have plans, we have rules, they haven't been following them, and they don't listen to the people who live and work and play and love Kaka'ako. It, it is for profit, it is for investment, affordable housing is a sham, it's for $120,000 for people who they call those people who can afford these kinds of housing. It is not for Hawaii's people. And we are very, very serious about moving that agency out. And if we can't, to rein them in so they follow the rules, not building buildings as high as Diamond Head, not putting in 37 buildings into Kaka'ako, high rises, not putting dense buildings where we live with with much more than what is the, the maximum that the city has. All of these may not be a concern to the neighbor islands, but it should be, because if you don't support agencies that support the community, they could be coming to your neighborhood soon. And that's what we want to do, is pull together as communities. And I'm so pleased and thank Hawaii Alliance for help, helping us and bringing us, Walter, to, to the, the capital with you. We want to make sure that development is done smart, it's done sustainably, it's done with following the rules, and it's done for the community who have to live there, and the businesses that work there, that we can continue to thrive as a community. We have 19 bills uh, and resolutions from changing the board to abolishing the agency. And we ask for your kokua. We cannot do it alone. We are a small community, but what our problems are is Hawaii's problems. We've heard from them already. All of your issues are Hawaii's problems. And we, we urge you to come to our website to ask us, uh, kakakaakounited.org, ask us about what's happening because we really think that this is one of the big issues of the day. And with your help, we can make sure that no community goes unheard. And we thank you all. And, and uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Ron Iwami as well. But we are Kaka'ako United. We are concerned citizens. And we are Kuhu. Ronald, 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 Ronald's going to talk about our beautiful shorelines. <laughs> Aloha, everyone. Yeah, my name is Ron Iwami. I've been surfing the Kaka'ako Kiwalo area for over 40 years. It's a place that I hold true to my heart. But right now, Kaka'ako, Mauka, and Kaka'ako Makai is under siege. Uh, 
I'll first explain to you uh, Kapa Makai. It is the land Makai of Alamona Boulevard and between Kiwalo Basin and Pier 2. What's special about this land, it is the last pu public oceanfront land in urban Honolulu. So it's very precious. Uh, and we need, the people need to protect this from becoming an another Waikiki. Uh, there is, presently, there is a law that does such, uh, protects this land. The law states you cannot build any residential in Kaka'akumakai and you cannot sell any public land in Kaka'akumakai. This law was passed back in 2006 as a result of a, I call it a people's movement, just like today, standing up for what we felt was right. The people's movement fought to stop the sale of public land to build residential high-rise towers right on this special oceanfront land. So the people prevailed, the legislators then listened to us and passed the law that is today protecting that land from becoming another Waikiki. But just yesterday, <coughs> we met with uh, Peter Opo at OHA. He's the OHA trustee. If you folks in the news, you know that OHA got a bunch of land in Kaka'akumakai. So they, uh, he expressed to me at that meeting that they want to build residential on their land, totally disregarding the law that is in place. We we're very, maybe not surprised, but disappointed that OHA is taking that stand. He explained that the bill has been introduced to that effect by Brickwood Voluntaria and it's called Senate Bill 3312. Yeah. And so keep that bill on the radar because if we let this uh, OHA build residential on the Makai lands, it will open the floodgates for other landowners in Makai, which is Kamehameha Schools, to build too. And once that happens, we lost the Makai lands for the people of Hawaii. So please, all of you know the major construction coming up, Malka of Alamona Boulevard, with the 30 towers, etc., and the 30,000 more people coming to this to this area. So it's, it makes more sense, I mean, a lot of sense and a lot of vision to keep the Makai land for the people of Hawaii. So I want to uh, encourage you folks to keep track of this bill because once we lose the ocean, we lose the heart and soul of the people of Hawaii because we are an island state. Uh, the ocean is as much a part of us as we are of it and we must be vigilant and protect that for the sake of who are we going to become as a people here in Hawaii. So please, uh, we can do it. We did it in uh, April of 2012. We stopped an exception to this law. And the only way we did it is by people power. And just like this gathering today, people power can, can change a lot of things and do good for the people. So I just want to end with that. Keep Kaka'akumakai for the people of Hawaii to enjoy the ocean and what it brings to us. Aloha. Okay, that's Kaka'ako. That's an urban development that we're trying to protect. Enough is enough in that area. And remember the bill number. Senate Bill 3312. And that's the Office of Hawaiian Affairs now trying to become developers. So we don't want Hawaiians to become developers and take the viewpoints away and turn our areas into urban slums. And oh, I just can go on and on. But let's not let Hawaiians become the things that Hawaiians have been fighting to protect. 
So to be changing laws that protect these areas is not the right thing to do. Bill 3312. All right, so that's Kaka'ako. Now we're going to go to the big island. And we're going to find out what is happening on the big island. It's geothermal time. So I'd like to ask Robert Petris, Petrisi and the Honorable Harry Kim to come up and say a few words about what is going on on Mokuokeave and geothermal. And while they're coming up, gang, right after them, we're going to have some music. We've been talking, talking, talking. Palani Vaughn is in the house. Yeah. And Jamaica Osorio is in the house. So stick around. We're going to have some relaxing time after we talk about geothermal. Hello? Oh, and of course, her father is going to be with her, John Osorio. <laughs> okay, geothermal time. Aloha. Thank you, Walter. Uh, it's really great to see uh, the people you know, taking the power back into their hands. I love this. I want to thank Walter and, and all the other GMO organizers. So uh, right now, I don't know how much you all know about geothermal, but uh, we've had geothermal on the Big Island since 1981, and it's been a disaster for the communities where it's been sited. They've got no monitoring, no regulation, and they've, uh, and they've really hurt a lot of people. But the big concern now is they haven't been able to find any more resources. So what they want to do is they want to start fracking in Hawaii. Yeah, and we've got several bills uh, before the legislature. One in the Senate, uh, Senate Bill 2940, I'm sorry, 2940, and uh, a House bill. Um, but Malama Solomon uh, is refusing to hear our fracking bill. Uh, so we would appreciate uh, anybody that could talk to the members of the Water and Land Committee and ask them to please uh, give the fracking bill a, a hearing. Let's take a look at this. They're trying to slide fracking in under the existing geothermal with no regulations at all. And you, you've probably heard what's happened on the mainland with oil and gas fracking. Well, this geothermal fracking is, is very similar. They're going to... It induces earthquakes and it can also pollute the water tables so we could really use some support uh, let's let's uh, please talk to the water and land committee and try and get that bill heard for us mahalo uh, thank you everybody my name is Harry Kim I want to thank all of you for being here I've always considered Hawaii Island the most beautiful place on God's given earth and with the most beautiful people. This is not about high rises only. This is not about geothermal only or cable or anything in regards to people looking at the most beautiful place on earth to make money. I thank you for what you do, hanging there for us. This island needs you, people need you. Thank you for loving this place. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have some entertainment. Let's bring up, hook up our sound system to our entertainers. Who's going to, Jamaica, you going to come up first? All right. Jamaica, bring your dad with you, Jamaica. <laughs> How about a big round of applause for Jamaica Osorio? Oh, my God. You guys gotta do better than that. Oh my papo! I want you guys to repeat after me. My kapo, my kaoya iko. My kapo, my kaoya iko. Y'all know what that means? It means from the night comes the truth, from the darkness, from the depths of Paul come the truth. We are the darkness, the depths of Paul. The night we bring the truth. So don't forget my kapo, my kaoya iho. When it gets cold outside and we got nobody to love, understand what I mean when I say, ain't no way we're gonna give up. And like a little girl cries in a bed at the mind. Is there anyone out there? Is 
learning to find fear in 8.8 .8 trillion people have been displaced. I'm sitting at my computer watching the number rise. It feels so much like Haiti, Katrina, Indonesia. It's been 50 years since Chile has been shaken like this one in the 1960s. 6,000 dead bodies fell to the cracks. 60 sunk in Hawaii. They call this global warming. The climate is correcting itself. I call it earth rattling, quaking, plate shifting, tsunami lifting. The sea is rising. And in my tiny Honolulu town, that means underwater homes. There was a wall of water taunting my homeland. I'm 2,000 miles away. The phone lines are hollow like open graves in Hawaii. Brown bodies are born asthmatic, choking from first inhale, running from an aquatic mountain. Is there anyone out there? It is no wonder we cannot breathe. This is reality. Global warming will break the foundation of a community without even shaking the penthouse suites while the men and women who finance the Earth's deterioration play the role of its savers, sipping martinis in hybrid glass-bottom boats, tallying the brown bodies that float by. This society's roots are sticking in quicksand, our hands above our heads, trying to form prayers for relief funds, hoping the government might soon start funneling money back into education so the next generation, if there is one, will learn how to prevent this from ever happening again. This is if the government thinks if we are uneducated, we cannot be ashamed of them. Won't understand that the elite only have faith in the private, the educated, that the rest of us don't stand a chance. Cut the crap. It is 2014, 2010. Chile has just been hit by an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake, sending a tsunami to Hawaii. But you see, we were lucky. Remember? The tsunami barely hit Hawaii shores, but our children were already sinking anyway because the government's idea of a solution to an economic depression is furlough Fridays. Right. Instead of cutting from a one trillion dollar war, we take school days from our offspring and we all know the environment is dying because our legislation is failing at teaching our children to sprout to concrete enough with a quick fix, band-aids and budget cuts. It is time to fill classrooms, not empty them, unloading our brown bodies overseas to fight terrorism will not lighten this island enough to keep it afloat. It is 2013. It is time for a solution. Time to stop counting backwards. Time to stop counting backwards to Haiti, Chile, Indonesia. Do not let the rhetoric fool you. There is nothing natural about the way we have destroyed our planet. Haiti is just 9-11 from a different angle. We are all our own worst enemies. Terrorists dressed as patriots. Look around you. The death toll is rising with the sea level. We are all still counting sinking bodies. It is time to decide who is going to be privileged enough to survive next time. Yeah. Shoot. All right, I'm going to do one more poem, and then I'm going to ask my dad to come up with me, and we're going to do a, a song for y'all. Um, this next poem I wrote while I was living in the United States, and I believe I was living in California at the time, and it talks specifically about the oppression faced by people of color in the United States. And I want to do this poem today because oppression anywhere allows for oppression everywhere. Um, and the issues that the people, our cousins and brothers and sisters in the United States are facing are very similar to the issues we face today. It brings out desperation in all of us. Um, and it is a darkness that we are all fighting to emerge from. So, my mother grew up in Detroit, 12 miles. Royal Oak, Michigan in the 1960s where young children, privileged enough to be born on a certain side of the line, play Red Rover and picket fences. Just a pebble's throw from Eight Mile Road. America's most defining city suburb line where institutionalized racism learned to procreate in a time where an integrated neighborhood was deemed unstable. Redlining was used as a restrictive covenant that determined where people of color could live and buy homes. City officials drew the maps and watched the city sink into soil. And in these streets, the red line still run deep, like the feet of die people free. And in 2013, the city seems to be burning from the inside out, really confusing our skins as charcoal and lacquer. The faster they burn, the happier the customer. We're not afraid to say we want no color here. But in ancient Detroit, in Philadelphia, the five boroughs are ghettos began to burn. Best believe it's the dirty south, Los Angeles. It's not like we didn't know that racism had plagued every inch of American soil. At Stanford, I learned these facts at a distance. In my suburban cul-de-sac bubble, we pretended that diversity in our classroom would mean that we can far from our past. Far is enough. We throw the word post race around to racism. It's something we have beaten when we know we aren't even in remission. Those of us born on a certain side of the line remember the taste of race enough to identify what it is. 
It's my ethnic studies teacher saying that we don't grow up knowing that people of color are underrepresented in university classrooms. It's my white classmates agreeing with the statement, the brown bodies of the room that we need to open our eyes to see it. It is the language. How it doesn't fit right on our tongues, the history books access, the process we go through to teach ourselves that this is wrong. Never learning how to fix it, that would be too dangerous when we darken the lives of the people sitting in this filth does if we play discussions with histories if we didn't even learn the lessons. And we have read of the lynching, how dark bodies hung in the deep south, white men fronting whiter capes playing God, making angels of young boys. We watched as their halos fell below the jawline, only gasping at the cracking noise of bone to skin to rope, how something other than weight hung in the air those days. It is heat, it is hate, and it is screaming our names. So what happens when in Arizona, black, queer, Chicano, and any literature other than white is banished from the classroom to the furnace? How fast are we burning now when you add the books, when all you can read are white pages? When will there be enough room for our black and brown bodies in this institution? Can you see the smoke rising, the ink hanging? Can you breathe the hypocrisy or slice it? Can you taste it? How in the last two years, unemployment rose from 8 to 16 million, while wealth held by millionaires in the United States rose by 18%. It is 2014. Some red lines have only thickened since the 60s. The government is playing maintenance, and we are burning in the aftermath. Our homes are ground zero. No one comes to visit. No one sees anything but dirt. But just beyond the email road, there is this house where young children, privileged enough to be born on a certain side of the line, as they went rover and picket fences, we can see them from where we hang. It is almost as if we can reach them from the darkness. I'd like to welcome up my father, Jonathan K. Come up with the Osorio. If you're next to him, you should, oh, here he is, cool. Mahalo. We're gonna do this one quick thing and then run off the stage. And I'm gonna hope nobody texts me while I'm doing this, because I don't remember the words. We do this song, Nelly Ayn it was written for the, uh, for, in support of Queen Lili Uokalani. We do this now because actually the counter of the song is that we have no aloha for a government that steals the land from the people, that takes away the air that is rightfully belongs, belongs to them. We have no aloha for that government and we are in resistance. We have been in resistance now for more than a hundred years. I am not. I'm 202, Pigeon 202 is my, the class I'm in right now. So we're going to do this a little different.
identity alive through his music. Uncle Palani Vaughn. If I could ask everyone to kind of come in close, come in a little bit closer because Palani's going to lead us in some song, yeah? He's going to ask us to sing along with him. He's going to ask us to join him. Let's join him. Mahalo. The new song goes like this. How long, how long, how long was Queen Lily Kalani waiting for 121 days of injustice to terminate? How much longer will America to act upon its night? Apology and return the kingdom of public to a queen that it took from her of January 17th of 1890. We need to let the U.S. Marine.
apology bill. They apologized, but didn't do anything about it. <laughs> oh yeah, when they land in the U.S. Marines, thanks, thanks to the uh, the uh, so-called diplomat, U.S. diplomat in Hawaii, his name was John L. Stevens. Remember that name? He was the guy that started it all. Called off the Marines, and they attacked. Not as they attacked, they threatened our queen, and her life was spent along with the, her brother who preceded her, King Kalakaua, in trying to preserve our Hawaiian people. Olulahui was King Kalakaua's call. Increase the nation. And you guys who are part Hawaiian should know that it was predicted that in 1897, our Hawaiian blood was going to be extinguished just because our people were not reproducing and dying from diseases and from every other cause. So there were 43,000 pure-blooded and half-blooded Hawaiian people left in the kingdom in 1874 when King Kalakaua came to the throne. He declared, Ho'olulahui. And so you who do genealogies, try to check your family uh, birth records, you'll find that from the 1874 on through up through his death and, and further beyond, that Hawaiian families were producing many, many children. One of my grandfathers had 20 children. And so he did his part to hold on the <laughs> Listen to the mission bells. Ringing, ringing. Hear Hawaiian people singing, singing. He stands alone. He's watching his own. He's weaving his coconut hat now. Tutukan is a weaving his coconut hat. He's watching his people giving. They're giving. We're giving. We gave everything. So there's nothing more we can give. Their hearts full of laughter and song. Someday he shall share with the grandchild who will care, who will keep on weaving his coconut hat now. Like Tutukane, keep on weaving his coconut hat. We all have Tutukanes and Tutu Vahine. They teach us if only we will listen. And I have to acknowledge the charter schools. I'm so happy. There's Hala Kumana standing right here in the red shirt. One of my granddaughters is an eighth grader with Hala Kumana. And then Hala Lokahi, who presented their hula and, and kahea. The face of his islands are changing, changing. The ways of his people are fading, fading. Though his race is a dying, the reindeer is crying. We, your coconut. To come in, weave your coconut hat. Aloha. <laughs> Mahalo. It's Walter. You know what? This guy is, uh, he's a fellow Kamehameha graduate with me. And I'm older, but he, um, he has done such a marvelous job, you know, championing the causes. So has Andre Perez and many others here. And so I've said this to the, the Hamana. What you're experiencing now is just the start. And hopefully it won't be a lifelong struggle. 
that we've uh, been engaged in in our Kupuna before, all the way up to 1893. 121 years of struggle, and still nothing has come down from the great uh, American government to rectify, or even from our legislature. And I, you know, I have uh, the due respect for our legislators, they're, they're doing a job. And I have friends who are in it, but all I can tell them is you have to look at the truth. And uh, as Andre showed me, Aloha Aina is a way of saying you're a patriot, you love the land. And Aloha Aina Oya Iko, the true patriot who truly loves his land. So the GMO uh, cause is very significant. My, my eldest son is, uh, is on Kauai. I'm sure he's part of the, the GMO battle. He's a fireman, and uh, he's now the fire inspector for Kauai. So he doesn't have days off, he doesn't work every day. But uh, I wanna just say I, I'm very proud of knowing someone like Walter, and encourage him to run for office again. <laughs> oh, he's back in away. <laughs> no. It's his, it's his life he chooses and he champions great causes. And Andre, thank you for inviting me. And these two gentlemen are from the Hawaii Royal Order of Guards. Who are very, very, uh, this particular man, Hoapili, his, what was it, great, great, great grandfather, way up there, way back to King Kamehameha's time, was the, the chief who hit the bones of the king, Kamehameha. And he's not telling anybody. He's not telling. <laughs> okay, anyway, mahalo no, and have a great, great day. And hola hui. helping people organize in all different parts of our community on Oahu and even the outside islands. They're part of Local 5 Union. It's really interesting to see how the unions are becoming not only concerned about jobs, but being concerned about the quality of life of their workers and the quality of life of everybody in the community. So at this time I'd like to have the people representing IKEA to come up on the stage and talk about what they're doing in the community especially on the countryside. We heard from Kaka'ako. We're supporting the people in Kaka'ako. Now we're gonna hear from the North Shore and we're gonna try and support the people on the North Shore. Here is Ikea. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for allowing me to share a few words about profits over people. My name is Jolie. I work at the Ilikai Hotel for the past 24 years. I was born and raised on the Big Island, but I've been living on Oahu for 30 years. I'm here today because I don't want to see the Hawaii I grew up and call my home destroyed. Whatever our opinions are about the tourism industry in Hawaii, I know its future is important because tourism will never go away. At the very least, tourism should provide for us. The hotel I work at, the Ilikai, is no more. The hotel that so many people remember from the opening credits of the Hawaii Five O is no more. The hotel that once employed hundreds of people in our community is no more. Over the years, the Ilikai has gone from a booming hotel to nothing. Today, only 62 workers are working are employed and many of them are on call. Most of us at the Ilikai are too young to retire but too old to be appealing to potential employers. Our employer is converting hotel rooms into condominiums. This is what we call condo conversion. This is the story of our industry. Thousands of job lost through corporate greed. The only ones benefiting from condo conversions are the large corporations that now own us. If we allow the corporations to take away our jobs, 
We are allowing profits over people. We are allowing them to sell off beachfront land and destroy our community. We've been told by the corporations what is good for us. They measure the success of the industry by number of visitors to our islands, the amount of revenue generated, the amount of money the visitors spend. But who benefits in the long term? Not me and not, not you. Let's get real. We want tourism to work for us. We need to do something now. We, should, we shouldn't have to fight for good jobs in Hawaii. If hotels wants to do business in Hawaii, then they, sh then they should allow us to set the rules. The one rule that should matter is whether or not the people of Hawaii benefit. That's right. Just think about what happened at the Ilikai. We are the poster child for why we need our union Local 5, why we need IKEA movement. We cannot rely on our politicians. We need to make things happen. Join IKEA. Join us at the rally on March 5th. We are trying to present legislation, legislation to, to prevent condominium conversion. Look us up on Facebook. That's again IKEA. Thank you. Mahalo, Jolie. Aloha, Mike Cole. My name is Joshua Noma. I'm Kanako Oivi. Hawaii is my ancestral homeland. And I come to tell you that we are continuously under attack. But before I go into the details of how we're under attack, let me first tell you who I am and where I come from. Some of you guys may recognize my last name. Yes, I am from the Noma Inga. Nico, Al, Pete, Noma are the younger brothers of my father, John Noma. My family came, uh, the Samoan, Samoan side of my family uh, came from Samoa in 1970 and settled in Camp 4 housing. I was born and raised in Kalihi, low income, affordable housing, Kukui Gardens, the public housing of Camp 4 housing, Merai Homes, at Kukui Park Terrace. So when this state talks about building affordable housing and low income housing, I know what that looks like. I am just a stone throws away from Ala Park and seen the massive ill effects of Kukui Street deterioration of downtown due to massive urbanization. I was a city boy, growing up, child of the urban development, concrete jungle of Honolulu. Zero connection to the land, zero uh, opportunity, uh, accessibility to the Aina. My father is a bus driver, and my mother is a hairstylist, and they did the best they could to just continue to put a roof over our head and to survive the best that we could growing up in Kalihi. My mother's mother, Marie Kalia Arrington, is full-blooded Hawaiian, descended from Makaaina Na in Kau, on the island of Mokuokiabe. And during World War II, during World War I, her grand her parents brought her and her family. They left Big Island and settled in Honolulu in a Hawaiian homestead or in the Hawaiian um, era known as Damien Track. Today that's where the the Honolulu Airport is. My, my grandmother and my grandfather met during World War II at the hot spot right over here in Hotel Street. <laughs> my grandfather is a black man in the army. Um, and he met my grandmother. He told he used to tell me that he met his Polynesian princess. And he was so proud, um, you know, being a black man coming to Hawaii and, and, and meeting his Polynesian princess. Now, the lack of opportunity for our people has led to the mass exodus of Hawaiians from our ancestral homeland. They have to go to the mainland to seek a better life, to seek a job, to seek the very opportunities just to provide food, education, and a quality of life for their children. My family included, out of my mother's, uh, my grandparents had 13 kids, out of my mother's 12 siblings, only three still live in Hawaii. 
and only one is a homeowner, be it on Hawaiian homelands. Now rampant, now what happened back in the 70s is rampant real estate and speculation has led to the urbanization of Honolulu and skyrocketing prices. This has led to the displacement of many of our Hawaiian people. Back in the 70s and 80s, many of you guys will remember, our Hawaiian people were pushed onto the beaches of Wamanalo, pushed onto the beaches of Himakaha, pushed onto the beaches of Mokulaiia. And our state, in order to protect tourism, because they said that they didn't like the way the beach looked, went in and evicted all of our people off of the beach, our hardworking Hawaiians, who just are trying to live on the land of their ancestors. Now today, you guys may not think of, think of it, but profit rules and all the people in this building continue to follow the big business. And guess what? Our Hawaiians now continue to uh, be pushed out. And now you see, instead of going on the beaches, you see them underneath the freeway, underneath Nimitz Viaduct, yeah. right? Being pushed out. Now this, all in the name of modernization, all in the name of expansion, all in the name of tourism, now this cancer that is urbanization, which has been controlled in Honolulu since you know the white man first came to our shore in 2007, has begun to creep out into Koalalo, the area that I live in now, the house that my mother was raised in in Haula, is the same house that I'm raising my family in Maohana in right now. Now. Our language, our culture, and our aina is under attack. The pressures to assimilate to an American view, the American values, continuously threaten our Hawaiian cultural traditions. In my community, the massive urbanization project known as Envision Laie and the Turtle Bay Expansion Project threatens the rural country character of Kola Loa, which is a rural Hawaiian community. We are under attack by Bill 47, also known as the 2012 Kola Law Sustainable Communities Plan. During backroom deals with the Honolulu uh, City and County, Mayor Caldwell's office, Department of Planning and Permit, along with um, the for-profit arm of the LDS Church, Hawaii Reserves Incorporated, BYU Hawaii, as well as Polynesian Culture Center, they have gone and hijacked our community's plan and have inserted this massive urbanization development that will no longer keep the country country, that will no longer keep our rural country charm. And in fact, it violates traditional customary rights of Kuleana landholders right now who live on the land growing kalo in Laie. Bill 47 will not only create a new city in Malakahana, We'll also look to create a Malka Connector Road that will run right through Kuleana lands that will connect Kahuku, Laie, as well as Haula, violating the traditional and customary rights of Native Hawaiians. The Turtle Bay expansion not only threatens native and endangered wildlife, but also plans to put up new condos and timeshares into uh, an expanding uh, Turtle Bay. But these new buildings and these new condos and these timeshares aren't going to provide a livable wage jobs for you and I. So I say, why are you going to build these condos and these timeshares and sacrifice our aina for nothing? For what? You know, so we can continue to be living as second class citizens in our own country. I say I'll hold it to that. I'll hold it to Bill 47. Keep the country country. Mahalo, Auntie. Mahalo, Auntie Didi. <laughs> what we have done, my friends and I, along with the Fenua Coalition, I kill, I represent the Kolalo Hawaiian Civic Club. We have created an organization, uh, a vehicle, a peaceful expression called Aloha Aina no Kolalo. We will have a march on Sunday, February 16th, a silent march in Malaikahana, where we'd like to invite all of you to come and join us in Koala Law yeah. to express our, our, our kue against this development, which threatens 
our Hawaiian way of life, and our very communities that we hold dear. We're saying, do not compromise our countryside for more development. Do not compromise our Hawaiian culture, our access to the Aino, our access to our water and our resources for more development. Keep the development in Honolulu, in the primary urban core. Keep the country, country. So what I want everybody to do right now, I want you to take out your smartphone. I know everybody gets smartphone right now. Everybody, hold up your smartphone. Pull up Facebook. Pull them up. I'll give you guys some time. I wait. I want you to go to www.facebook.com slash Aloha Aina Koala Loa. Like us on your Facebook. Like our Facebook page. Share our Facebook page with your friends, with your Ohana. Encourage them to come out to our meeting, I mean to our march, our silent march, to protest this development. We have our table back here. We're going to see our joint table of IKEA Defend Oahu Coalition. Come on and join us. The last thing I want to say, I want to speak directly to our, our keiki, our future over here. I'm so proud to see our keiki from Halau Kumana leading the way. Leading the way. Mahalo for you guys. You can see here a couple of uh, uh, two very important people to myself, and I think they symbolize the fight, the changing of the, the makeup of this fight. My nephew Jacob Aki, as well as Lisa Grandinetti, both are UH students, freshmen at UH, on our planning committee to help organize this march. I got Robert Fried, another UH student out there right there in the march. We're working together. I want you guys to know, all you young people out there, that you guys can be the change that we seek. We don't have to wait to these people in these buildings that have to make the decision. We don't have to wait to Governor Abercrombie to give us uh, uh, what we need. We just gotta take them, right? We just gotta take them back. And it all starts with every single one of you guys. Mahalo, mahalo ke alkua, mahalo for letting us speak. Aloha aina no koala aloha. God bless. Before we go, I want to introduce the retirees from the Ilikai Hotel. How about a round of applause for our kupuna over here? Okay, next we're going to talk about bad legislation. <laughs> Last year, lots of them. The one we're concerned about is the one that was pushed by Governor Abercrombie. He pushed 1171 last year. It was a bad, bad bill. So we're going to be talking to you. We're going to bring two people up here to talk to you about this bill is on the backs of the Hawaiian people. So I want to introduce to all of you Hina and Kavika to come up on stage and we're going to be talking to you about something that we have to change. And it's called Law 85. And last year it was 1171. Come on, come on up. Listen really carefully, guys. This is a very important one. Hello, my kako. If everyone can repeat after me. Ola naivi. Ola naivi. Ola naivi. Ola naivi. The bones live. This is a core fundamental principle and value for our Kanako Oivi, our indigenous people of Hawaii. Again, the, the term Oivi, of the bone. Ola naivi, that the bones live, is to show that the descendants of the kupuna who came before us are caring for them and making sure that the elders those that are living and the kupuna that have been buried are cared for. Those sites where they're buried become wahi kupuna. They become wahi kanu. Not only those burial sites, but also those important cultural, spiritual ceremonial sites that populate this aina and make it our aina, that which feeds, because we have fed it. These are the fundamental principles that for many years were run over by developments, by corporations, by government, 
seeking primarily profits. It wasn't until 1988 where there is finally a movement among the OEV and their allies on Maui at Honokahua to stop the disinterment of what eventually were 1,100 Ibi Kupuna in the building of the Ritz-Carlton. Out of that struggle came the formation of Hui Malame Na Kupuna Ohovai the group caring for the ancestors. Out of that struggle also came state laws that amended our historic preservation laws to put in place protections for our Ibi and for our burial sites. It also created the Burial Council, which was one of the first opportunities to give Kanaka Oivi a voice in what happens with the bones of their ancestors and with their special sacred sites. We had among the most strongest historic preservation laws in the U.S., if we consider ourselves U.S., which I know most of the people here don't, but nonetheless, as far as state laws go, uh, we had some of the strongest until last year. What happened last year was 1171 was passed. Right. What 1171 did was to undermine these laws, which prior to the passage last year required that developers, that government first study the entire scope of a project before they commence building. Many developments were started in violation of this, in particular the rail project. And it was from a case brought by Paulette Kalekini uh, that finally heard the Supreme Court, affirmed the need for the state, for developers to first study the lands that are going to be developed before they build until it's too late. Unfortunately, after many of you who I see and recognize came here to this very site to give testimony, to make our legislators hear our voices, um, the result of that action was that 1171 was passed. Now Act 85. Uh, so now, um, what they tried to do with the rail, which was to develop all the way up until they hit the burials, and by then it'd be too late to move the project, that is now made possible. So there are a number of, of, of bills that have been introduced that are trying to repeal Act 85. And so if there's one thing you can take away from just my brief manao here, is to repeal 80, Act 85 in order to make the bones live. To Ola Naivi, mahalo. As Brother Kalekoa said, our true place of rule in the hearts of our Kanaka Maoli isn't necessarily in this building, but it's there. I'm going to 
not challenge, but I'm going to throw this little uh, insertion into the pot. I am going to say that no matter what is the physical structure of where decisions are made, we, the people assembling today, are saying that the mana, the power to decide, the power to control, and the power to ensure that what is Pono for us, that which needs to happen, is with us. Now for me, for me, this one Hawaiian, where, if I were the one in power, it doesn't matter whether I was in that building over there or this building here. It's just like Pule. Now for those of you, anybody who's Christian out there, some people will say, oh, you gotta go to church. You gotta pray. No need go church to pray. If you pull a ho mana kahiko, anything we say, na au makua, my kalahi kia kalako, you don't have to be beneath only the kukuina tree to say this. You don't have to be down by the seashore to say this. The power lies within our minds, our hearts, our hands, our mouth. The power is with us to make sure that we articulate that which is pono. Today, I was asked to speak on two things. One is Malama Ivi Kupuna, and the other is on charter school education that impacts our people. Number one, to springboard off of not only Brother Kalei Koa, but also what Kavika was saying. Now, for some of us who are very pro independence, Ra, Hawaii Kuokoa, 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 Kie o Hawaii. For those of us who are pro-independence, it's a no-brainer. A lot of the issues that we are seeing today. Today, we hear from Save Kaka'ako, Protect Kaka'ako. We're hearing Free Makua. We hear about Save the Ko'olau community, Kahuku. Today, we're hearing about GMO. Really, in an independent Hawaii, we have an opportunity to put a different spin on this. However, under the current infrastructure, which so many of us at so many different levels that we have to deal with, this is my experience in chairing the Borough Council for these last several years. If I were totally opposed to any and all development, that would put me in a real pickle as to how I'm going to advocate for our Ivi Kupuna. So I had to strategize. And that's one of the things I'm going to advocate to all of our young people. No matter what you and I feel, even to all the rest of you here, no matter what we feel about anything, strategy and analysis. Let us be an educated community. Let us be a community that is empowered to say what we want to say based on a clear understanding of what are the issues at hand. So for any of us who are going to hold the Hawaiian flag up, for any of us who are going to hold the sign, we love organic farmers. We love farming. That's what it should be. We love farming. What are the pono ways to farm? That's really going to, going to be an interesting conversation. Malama ivi kupuna, development in Kaka'ako. Now if, it were, if this were Hina Wong Kalu 10 years ago, when I used to walk into the halls of this building and say, you're fornicating our people. You're prostituting our culture. The me 10 years ago wouldn't get heard and I'd be out of the table and Ivi Kupuna would be dug up without me being able to advocate for it. So I stopped telling people, go fornicate yourself. <laughs> I stopped telling people, you're prostituting our culture. Now I have to have a stronger mental analysis and a clearer strategy. So my strategy under this, because I, like I said, I'm still pro-independence. Even though I'm running for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, trustee at large, political hit, 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 vote for me. Even though I'm doing that, I'm still to the core of what I support. I'm still very pro-independence. Now, my, our voices are important. And if I felt that my voice couldn't do it, I probably wouldn't try to put myself there. But Malama Ivi Kupuna has taught me 
be a good analyst and be a good strategist. So the, what that really is talking about, again, is feel our mana, everyone here. Feel our power. And no matter what we want to be rah, rah, rah behind, just got to be clear about how we're going to do it and how we're going to say it. But again, malama ivi kupuna. So if I said, no, screw you guys. No rail. Screw you guys. No development. That pretty much alienate me from being able to malama ivi kupuna, wouldn't it? Because then the people who are going to develop, they have money galore, and people who make political decisions are just going to say, well, move Hina to the side, carry on. But I have to be clever. I have to stay at the table. Stay with Malama Ivi Kupuna. Can you imagine what I felt like on several occasions when the pro independence people of which I have been for all this time, it's no secret, come to my burial council chambers and said, you need to remember, this is our Hawaiian kingdom, Hina, you need to remember. And what, what did Hina say? Uh, excuse me, who are you trying to school here? The nerve. So, again, Malam Evi Kupuna. People tried to de uh, detract my attention from Malam Evi Kupuna discussion, but I stuck to it because Kupuna in the land means that we still have this cycle. We are children of our parents, and they are children of their parents, and this cycle needs to continue. That is our connection to the land. So when we say, Aloha Aina, it says, Aloha Aina. When we love our land, that means we love our people. When we love our land and our people, it means we honor our kupuna. When we honor our kupuna, it means that we are doing our best to advocate for the things that are going to be good for our community and our people. A healthy community, a healthy people. I could bore you with all kinds of other stuff, but you saw my students here earlier today. Hawaiian Charter School Education. This is one very viable way to ensure that we, you and I, control what we teach our children. Why we teach them what we teach them. What we teach them what we want to teach them. It's the same argument as what are we putting in our bodies? Why are we putting it in our body? And I'd like to advocate for anybody who's going to say no GMO. Everybody who's no GMO over here, start inserting what are we going to be pro, what are we going to be supporting. If GMO is bad for us, then everybody needs to also start saying this is Pono. If GMO is not Pono, then what is? Because no matter who's making the decision, we have to know our options and our choices. So let's start to put that out. Let's start to have our movement of our communities be pro what we want to see. So I am pro charter school education. I am pro empowerment for our community to make clear, rational, and informed decisions. And on Ivi Kupuna, it reminds me to say to you all, take care of the kupuna, take care of the land. We malama these things, we will continue to be nourished so that we can provide for a solid future. Mahalo anui i kokako hui ana ke ila, mahalo ya oko kaho ui kai ka ana. Mahalo no keia la mai kai o ke aloha ana ka aina. And a last, um, a last political blurb. Hina wang kalu oha trustee at large. Go to the bottom of the list. Check. Ahoy ho. Pro charter schools. We need to support our charter schools. Thank you, Hina. Thank you, Kavika. Okay, next we're going to go back to the big island. I don't know if you guys heard the governor with his state of the state address. I went to go watch him after him and talk, and I was listening. And I was listening and I was walking around it. Then I heard what I heard and I almost fell down. This is what he said. He said that Mauna Kea. It's going to be the gift from the state of Hawaii to the world. This guy gave as a gift our most sacred mountain 
to the whole world, it's a gift to the whole world, so they can come up there, put their spy glasses, and look into the skies. He had the audacity to give away our most sacred mountain to the world. So I'd like to bring up some people that have been fighting to protect Mauna Kea to please come up and tell us the story from the big island of our sacred mountain, Mauna Kea. Aloha to all of you from Hawaii Island, from Pukapu, by way of Kohala. Eano maua o Havani maanei. Me ke aloha pihai loko o ko maua mo puvai no oko no pakahi apau. We are so happy to be here and I'm going to tell you why we start with that chant. We start with that chant because we need to remind ourselves that we are from six districts of an island, Hawaii Island. And although we do not speak for the people of Hawaii Island, we are speaking for our Ohana Valeno. It reminds us this chant of how important and how conscious we have to be of what comes out of our waha to your ears, that we, re we represent our mokupuni with the very best of who we are. And that we represent our mauna, our mauna that called our name three years ago. And I too will speak to the opio over here, not because I'm gonna put pressure on you, but because I honor you because I have been on the top of the Mauna, maybe not with you, but with students in Yakula. Students from Halau Kumanai have stood on the Mauna with you. So I will speak to them and of course to everyone. When I say that three years ago, the Mauna called our name. Yes, our name specifically through the communication of a young child, my daughter. My daughter who is holding it down at Kamehameha School in Keaau today and not here, but I'm gonna speak of her. So I have to speak carefully, truthfully. And the Mauna spoke to her through the voice of Mo'oina Nea herself. And I speak that because I am not in fear of speaking that. I speak that because I love to say that because we are still Kanaka and we can still communicate with those who came before us. And if we are listening and we stay in the pono of what they ask us, then it is the best thing we will ever experience in our entire